Hello, I'm Kate Peck and welcome to the final episode of the Osmodo Show for 2021. It's been a strange year, so we thought we'd wrap everything up before Christmas and give you the gift of a couple of fantastic chats with our favourite top two-wheeling motorcycle athletes. The show is gigantic, so please strap yourself to the couch and put your feet up. Today in the studio, our recently crowned three-time My Bike Motorcycle Insurance Australian Superbike Championship presented by Motor Champ Wayne Maxwell is here to chat through an insane weekend at the Bend in South Australia. Honda Racing's Carl Webster joins us on the desk before he steps up to Thor MX1 for the Penrite Pro MX presented by AMX Superstores. International Rally Raid's hottest new Australian mullet, Daniel Chucky Sanders, catches up with me from Dakar testing in Dubai. And special guest, young gun Joel Kelso, who's home down under for a quick break before he embarks on the biggest adventure of his life, the FIM Moto3 World Championship. Remember to follow along on socials using the hashtag and handle OzMotoShow. Let's kick things off with a look back on the exciting grand finale of the My Bike Motorcycle Insurance Australian Superbike Championship presented by Motul from the Bend Motorsport Park just two weeks ago. The grand finale saw all five major titles under the ASBK umbrella decided, headlined by the Alpine Stars Superbike class. Bruce Mobile with K-Tech Wayne Maxwell was on course to claim a third Superbike crown in what was to be his farewell ride. And to throw some added spice to the mix, Ducati MotoGP superstar Jack Miller came home to take on our homegrown heroes aboard a Desmo Sport Ducati prepared machine. Then there was Penrite Honda Racing's Troy Herfoss, who wasn't going to let Maxwell make light work in his attempt to claim title number three. He surprised the entire field by announcing he was jumping back on board his Honda following his horrific crash in Darwin back in June. So the prospect of a title fight going down to the wire between the pair was very much present. But Herfoss profoundly struggled upon his return and was unable to challenge his longtime rival. With Herfoss out of the picture, Maxwell went on to dominate both superbike races and claim his third championship of his career, putting him equal with Glenn Allerton, Josh Waters and Sean Giles as the most successful champions of the sport. In Motorsports TV Supersport, it was a three-way title fight between Brock Pearson, Tom Edwards and Max Stoker. Three young men wanting to put an exclamation mark on the 2021 title as the worthy champion. In the opening race on Sunday morning, Edwards laid down the gauntlet by claiming a dominant win by more than five seconds over Stouffer and Pearson. This meant it was an all-out fight for the championship in the final race of the year, and for the first two laps, it was Edwards who had the upper hand. But a rare mistake exiting turn 12 allowed Pearson to grab the lead on lap three and hold on to win the 2021 Supersport title by just six points. It was just rewards for the 18-year-old Queenslander who's overcome adversity in recent times to take home the top prize. Congratulations must also go to Ben Baker, who claimed the unique double of winning the Dunlop Supersport 300 and Yamaha Finance R3 Cup in the same year and will be hoping for more success next season as he graduates to Motorsports TV Supersport. And finally, huge congratulations to Cameron Swain, who wrapped up the Blue Crew Oceana Junior Cup in the opening race on the Saturday afternoon. He'll now turn his attention to either race Supersport 300 or head across to England to contest the British Talent Cup season. That was just insanity. What a crazy round and the crowds were huge. It was brilliant. But somebody who lived it, breathed it and came out on top is our newly crowned three-time ASBK champ from Boots Mobile with KTEX suspension, Wayne Maxwell. Wayne, congratulations on that win. You've had a little bit of time to let it settle in. Now, how does it feel to be part of that club, that three-time uh, Superbike champ club? Honestly, it's an amazing feeling. Um, it's exceeded my expectations from a little kid growing up, I guess, and then um, to see the people that have done it and, 
you know, lived it and breathed it to be one of those. Um, it's sort of when I, when I reflect back in the moment, in the moment I was like a bit taken by it, seeing all the fans and my family there and probably a bit overwhelmed, but um, it's a pretty amazing achievement and uh, happy to be in the club. Let's talk about the weekend because it was just, the racing was wild. It was like the perfect recipe. International wildcard, we hadn't been riding and racing for six months and the, uh, the championship was up for grabs. Yeah, it definitely was a bit, bit uh, strange. Obviously over the, the, the lockdown period or whatever, we're at home, we're getting, you know, two months from the race and I'm starting to ramp up my training and get ready. And then uh, four weeks out, it stopped. And then obviously leading into the bend, there was a bit of you know chatter around you know, who's going to do what and who's going to do whatever. But um, yeah, very grateful. I have a very, um, you know, my team, unbelievable. They kept me so grounded. They gave me a package that put me in the position to be able to win a championship for, for us, because that's how we like, you know, without them, without them, there is no me. So um, look, it's an amazing feeling and um, yeah, look, happy to be sitting here talking to you about it. And speaking of young talent coming through, Wayne, you've been spending a lot of time on a new project of yours, the FIM Mini GP Australian Series. Now tell us a little bit about it and what you hope to achieve. Yeah, look, it's a great initiative by the FIM and, and Dorna with the Mini GP Series. It's, it's for 10 to 14 year old kids, so it's raced on a go-kart track. So it teaches them the skills and stuff a lot at a safer and slower speed. The winner of the series will take to Valencia for the final round of MotoGP, where on the Wednesday and Thursday of the before the race they hold the uh, World Mini GP race. So the top one to two riders from about 20 countries come there and um, they run them through. And you know, who knows? We could uh, be on the way to seeing our next Jack Miller. Wayne, uh, you've had quite an illustrious career. I'm just going to look back on a few of your stats. You've had 53 wins, 112 podiums, 28 poles, 200 race starts over 17 years. Tell me about a moment that was pivotal or that uh, really sticks with you from that from that time. Yeah, I guess the, a pivotal, the most pivotal moment was probably for me was um, 2013, really, when I lost my job at Honda in 2012 after finishing um, runner-up in the championship. It was funny, Josh Waters told me actually, he said, don't worry, you're going to be all right. And I had no idea what he's talking about. At that stage, Josh was going overseas, which was going to leave the Suzuki seat vacant. And um, I got a call from Suzuki, um, which was 10, year, 10 years after I got my first call and, and declined them on their offer. And um, yeah, so for me, I went there and honestly, it was an amazing experience for me. I learned so much from um, Suzuki and the team at, at PTR there, the whole, the whole team, everyone. It was, um, yeah, that was like a pivotal moment. It really taught me about myself and understanding a lot more. And then, um, yeah, it's, it's going to stick, that will stick with me for a long time. So you probably know what's coming next. You're going to go around again, yeah? Yeah, I, no, well. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking of something in my mind and then you know, I wasn't even listening to your question. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Are you going around again or no. what? Um, at this stage, I'm unsure. Like we have been getting uh, closer and closer and closer. But I guess um, what, what I was thinking about before I answered your question was, I've been looking for that ever since 2013 again. And uh, when I came to ride for Craig, um, I felt like I'd found it again. And obviously the results have, have reflected that. It's been a pretty uh, amazing two years. And, and when I said I wasn't going to ride at the start of the year, I didn't really think it was going to turn out. Um, how it has and, and, and a lot of things have changed for me away from the track. So we're getting closer to, to maybe being able to you know, continue next year. Um, there's a few things that we've still got to finalise. So yeah, we're closer than we were at the bend, but still not quite there. Well, Wayne, thank you so much for joining us. It's been excellent and a big congratulations on your, uh, your title and joining the three-time uh, ASBK club. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks. It's, um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, whatever the outcome may be and uh, whether I'm racing, they'll still be in the paddock 100%. Well, we have plenty more coming up on the show. Pirelli MX2's Honda Racing's Carl Webster joins us on the desk. Gas Gas's best looking mullet. Jackie Sanders also joins us from Dubai. And the newest addition to the Moto3 World Championship grid, Joel Kelso. We'll see you soon. Despite the season abruptly coming to an end due to COVID, the inaugural Penrite Pro MX Championship presented by AMX Superstores has been an outright success. Through all the jumps, whoops, and the wheel-to-wheel bar-to-bar action we've witnessed in the three completed rounds contested, we were able to crown new Australian champions in our respective classes. 
In the headline act, the Thor MX-1 class, it was CDR, Monster Energy, Yamaha's Luke Clout, who snatched the championship lead from KTM's Reagan Duffy in Maitland to claim his maiden Australian motocross title in the top tier of the sport. In the Pirelli MX2 class, no one could stop Honda Racing's Carl Webster, who went one better from his 2019 runner-up finish and won all but one of the motos contested across the three rounds in 2021, taking home the Australian MX2 title. And in the newly created Maxxis Tyres MX3 class, it was 17-year-old Blake Fox who rode his factory gas gas to championship glory, taking home the maiden Australian MX3 crown. And little did we know that Maitland was to be the championship decider and those who hit the ground running came out on top, including Honda Racing's Carl Webster, who's joining me on the desk right now. Carl, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Now, a big congratulations for taking out the Pirelli MX2 title. Uh, you won five out of the six uh, motos. You absolutely dominated. You finally turned bridesmaid into bride. <laughs> Yeah, it was uh, it was an awesome year. Um, unfortunately, it being cut short uh, at Maitland, um, couldn't have really asked for too much more, I suppose. I wanted to get the win really bad, and I wanted to have the whole entire championship more than anything. But luckily, we got the third round in, so it was classified as a championship. But uh, yeah, I was stoked, really happy. And I mean, you've worked really hard to get here. You've done the hard yards. Give us a little bit about um, how how that's all affected uh, your journey to this championship win. Well, I think. Since like 2019 and breaking my back at the end of 2017, it was a little bit of a reset for me. Um, I had to kind of, I guess, take a step back and work out how not to do that again. <laughs> um, I think that was probably one of the biggest things for myself. And then in 2018, and I, I guess, started into it a little bit slower. I uh, worked my way back in and going into 2019, I spent a lot more time down here. And I think that was probably one of the biggest things for myself. Uh, to get second in the championship that year, and and that I guess picked me up a lot more. Yeah, I kind of I won a few races and overalls, and I guess that was sort of what gave me the confidence and knowing that I could probably do it in the future. And then at the end of 2019, we went and represented Australia at Nations in uh, the Netherlands at Assen, and that I think for me was just something that really really picked me up. And after getting a taste of what it's like over there and whatnot knowing what I could come home and do would, would, would be something that I could really work on and, and help me to grow here. So you're stepping up to Thor MX-1 next year, uh, which is, you've got the 250R here, the Honda. You're moving to the 450. Tell us, I know you've had experience on the bike, but, but tell us your thoughts on the bike and, and the transition and the level of competition that you're going to be entering. Yeah, so moving up to the 450 class now, I've I have ridden the 450 a fair bit over the last couple of years with COVID and whatnot and, and not heaps of racing. So I have had a bit of time on it, but I haven't actually raced it so much. So it's really good. I love it. I've, this has been like the first time I've really sort of set one up for myself. We had a race on the weekend and I sort of got to show what I could do on it. I, I went really, really well, got the win. and. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to having a go on it next you year. You dominated, basically. <laughs> You're a dominator. It's so exciting. I feel like we could be looking at the uh, at the winner, at the championship winner of Thor MX1. Is this a possibility? I would love to say yes, and that's what I'm going to aim for and go for, but it's still a long way away. I'd like, I just want to build into next year and make sure I'm consistently there. The competition's really, really high. Everyone's got a lot of experience in that class, so I guess when it comes around, we'll see where I'm at and build from that. And finally, in 2020, you did head over to Europe for a couple of rounds of MXGP. Uh, that it, you were a little unlucky in terms yeah. of getting run over. Yeah. Um, but but when you go on these trips, do, what do you take away from them? What do you learn from them um, that you bring back to Australia? Well, yeah, I'm, it was very unfortunate. I uh, I did get the chance to go there, and I had a really really good few weeks prior to the GP. Um, but unfortunately, I did a uh, I, well. I went in to do like a German national there and, and I got ran over in the first turn. It wasn't even a bad crash, I just hit someone and fell over, but someone collected me and I broke my shoulder and was knocked out really, really badly. And I guess spending those few months there watching all the racing and being around it all and I guess really watching the world's best, I learned a lot from those guys and I tried my hardest to bring it back and, and do what I can do here. It's obviously fairly different, but 
yeah, watching those guys and how they ride, I think, is something that I've really tried to pick up on and, and learn how they get around things. And I think that was the biggest thing that I brought back. Good luck, Kyle. We cannot wait to, um, to see how you go. Next yeah. year is a really big year, so thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me on. Up next, from the deserts of Dubai, Gas Gas's best-looking mullet, Daniel Chucky Sanders. And then joining me on the desk is Moto3's newest addition from the Northern Territory, Joel Kelso. We'll see you in a hot second. Welcome back to the Osmodo Show. I'm Kate Peck and am thrilled to welcome to the show, all the way from Dubai, Gas Gas's fastest mullet rally rider, Daniel Chucky Sanders. Chucky, mate, where are you? Because that does not look like your home in outer Melbourne. No, there's no apple farm here and there's no uh, countryside views and, and all that. I'm currently in Dubai. I've been living in this room pretty much for... For two months now so another 15 days here and then we're flying out to the the big show in saudi arabia for dakar so chucky quite a bit has happened for you in the last 12 months you've scored yourself a factory gig with gas gas and a ride in the fim world rally championship is that a dream come true or what yeah it is it's really cool they um they gave me the opportunity to have sort of one year as a as a factory supported rider and then uh this the gas gas gig uh came up after liar no longer wanted to you know continue in rally and there was a spare spot in gas gas so i got the upgrade and i uh, got on to the fast red rocket and it's uh yeah I haven't looked back since and you've ridden ktms and husqvarna's so give us your take on the gas gas rc 450f uh, it's most like uh the other ones really it's it, there's not much change from from the KDM to Husky, obviously it's red and it's faster and uh, it's been good sort of setting it up over the year. Now we've really fine-tuned it the last two months here in, in Dubai and after the yeah, podium in Morocco, we knew we were heading in the right direction for Dakar, so it's looking good. And you've raced in all the famous deserts. I've been dying to visit Kazakhstan, Russia, Abu Dhabi. You must have so much sand to shake out of your knickers by now. <laughs> I'm not sure about knickers, but more like a bore at Mankini or something like that. <laughs> no, yeah, we've definitely I've traveled the world a lot this year. I've been, I think I've only been home four months this year. The rest is all out of, you know, two bags, two suitcases. So, yeah, when you got to carry one gear bag full of gear and then you got one bag full of clothes and exercise equipment and stuff, it's there's not much uh, traveling around. So Dakar 2022 is coming around very quickly. January 2nd, it kicks off. So you've had one crack at it now. How is this year going to be different for you? Last year, I was so sceptical of what was going to approach every day and, and how much I should push each day because I didn't know if there was some point in the rally where it's like my body's destroyed. I shouldn't have pushed from, you know, day one. But now I know I can pretty much go full gas from from day dot to the last day. And there's a little bit more pressure now because I uh, finished fourth uh, uh, this year. So we only can go up from here, hopefully, and uh, it's uh, work for the podium. And finally, we remember your successful tenure in the Australian Off-Road Rally Championship. Do you think that you would be where you are today without that experience and without taking out those six national titles? No way. It's it's just all... It's all a part of the development of, of right, racing and riding in the race craft. So I think enduro and racing the AIRCs has, you know, has definitely got me to where I am right now. The level so high in Australia and definitely definitely a great championship and it's, it's brought up a lot of fast riders and on the world stage. So it's, it's definitely one of the strongest championships in the world. Well, Chucky, all the best for Dakar 2022. We are all going to be cheering for you back in Australia. Thanks for joining us and we'll catch up with you next year. Thank you very much. I'm excited. Uh, Not many days to go. Well, I know what I'm going to be doing come Jan 2. Couch potato mode with Dakar on blast on SBS. So good luck to you, Chucky, over there. And, of course, good luck to Toby Price. But right now in the studio, I have another very special international guest. He's the newest addition to the FIM Moto3 World Championship grid, Joel Kelso. Joel, excellent to have you home. Welcome home. Thank you. No, I mean, it's an honour to be on here, I guess. And, um, no, it's good to have a chat with you about, you know, this season and about everything that's been going on. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. Now, you're living in Mallorca, in Spain. That's like the party capital of the world. Tell me what's going on over there. Well, it's not the best place. Nah, <laughs> it is um, It is good. It's uh, obviously the party capital, but nah, it's good. It's perfect weather for the beach, perfect weather for everything, really. Now, you're the... Um the red-headed pocket rocket from the Northern Territory that ended up winning the 2017 ASBK Moto3 Championship. Tell me about the, the fond memories that you have or, or whether that's kind of stayed with you, those experiences. Yeah, taking out the, the Moto3 Championship in 2017 with the fond memories in ASBK would be, yeah, taking the championship at Phillip Island that last weekend. It was actually a hectic weekend. Like we. We ended up crashing, but so did my title contender on the same race. So it was kind of lucky at the same time. And when we took the championship, that was, you know, the mark to go over to Europe. Now, you've had a really successful year this year um, in the FIM Moto3 Junior World Championship. You ended up in P4 and you got three wins and a pole. Give us a bit of a wrap of that season and that last race when you came through from P30 to win. Yeah, well, I mean, first of all, we didn't know what we are going to do this season. We, we started this in January and we didn't know we were in hotel quarantine coming back from Europe and finally yeah we got a we got an agreement done with my uh, team from 2020 with AGR and we knew that was a make or break season a little bit so uh, the pressure was on me but you know we performed and yeah like you said we came away with three race wins fourth in championship which was awesome also got a few wild cards and last race of the season yeah like like also you said I mean starting from last position first of all made it hard for myself on the Saturday didn't I but um, no, I made a show for it on Sunday. So yeah, no, it was awesome that race and the Sunday last, at the last race of the round, but yeah, no, it was good. Because that really did set you up for the offers to come through for the Moto3 World Championship. So you got four on the table. How did you decide? Well, look, we had um, the four options that we, we had and we chose CIP from the experience I had with them really. I mean, Europe is a difficult place. You, you know, you don't always just look at the money. You look at um, other things that are involved, you know, where you would do best because finally results are what pay. So um, I thought, in my opinion, the best team would be with CIP. And, yeah, that was a cho choice that we made. You know, we, we, it was a difficult decision, but it also was an easy one at the same time because I had a good feeling with the team. Everyone treated me like family in there. Now we're just waiting for the season to start. There's going to be three Aussies uh, in the MotoGP paddock, which is very exciting. Uh, how important is it for other Aussies and younger kids to see uh, you, you guys up there uh, achieving such great things on such an international level, but also for you to be in that conversation with Jack Miller and with Remy Gardner? First of all, it's awesome to even be in the conversation with them two, you know, guys that are now shining in, in the MotoGP paddock. And, I mean, it's kind of a bit of pressure, but also awesome to have, um, like, the, the spotlight on me and Jack and Remy to, to be putting an example to the younger kids now coming from Australia, you know. And I think the Ocean Junior Rookie Cup and the O'Vale Cup that's going to start next year will be awesome as well for the little kids to, to get involved and, and to start, you know, their career, really, because it's the start of where it all begins, you know. I mean, um, I think growing up is, is where it all needs to start to, to make it to the MotoGP. I think me starting in flat track and then going to ASBK and winning the championship helped me to become where I am now. So I think, um, yeah, the future is bright for the younger kids. That is fantastic. And I bet you cannot wait to come back for MotoGP at Phillip Island. Yeah, and especially since I haven't been here for two years, you know, because even when I was not racing in the MotoGP, I'd always come back and watch the MotoGP here in Australia. So it's been something that I've been going to for so many years. And now to actually come and race there is going to be, you know, amazing. That is going to be unbelievable. There's a lot of pressure on you, so... Just a bit. You just have to work it out. I think you'll be all right. All right, Joel. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been excellent to catch up with you. Thank you so much for having me on. It's my pleasure. Excellent stuff. Now, we've got to give a shout out to another Aussie overseas, Remy Gardner, who wrapped up the FIM Moto2 World Championship like the legend that he is. And he will be joining Ducati's Jack Miller on the grid for MotoGP next year. So good luck with that, Remy. And we will see you in 2022 for a chat on the Aussie. Show. 
Before we sign off for the year, let's have a look at what's ahead for 2022. Starting with the My Bike Motorcycle Insurance Australian Superbike Championship presented by Motul. We kick off the eight round championship at Phillip Island before heading north to Queensland Raceway in their first visit since 2014. Then back down to Wakefield Park for round three, followed by Darwin's Hidden Valley supporting the supercars once again. Then it's Queensland's Morgan Park in August, Simon Plains in Tasmania, followed by a return to Phillip Island and finishing the year off at the Bend Motorsport Park in December. The Penrite Pro MX Championship presented by AMX Superstores is an eight round affair kicking off once again in Wonthaggi, Victoria before heading up to far north Queensland to Mackay for round two. We then head to Wodonga for the third round before we head to Gilman for round four in June. We then head to New South Wales for rounds in Maitland and Coffs Harbour before heading back to Queensland for the final two rounds at the Queensland Moto Park and Coolum. Finally, the Yamaha Australian Off-Road Championship is set for a bumper year of racing, traversing across the country for 12 rounds of racing. Starting off in Queensland with two big events, the series then heads to New South Wales for rounds in Kyogle and Nara, before heading to Kingston in South Australia, finishing off in Tasmania's northwest coast. Well, that's all we have time for today. Have an excellent Christmas. Stay safe, go fast, and we'll see you in the new year. Bye.